Hello, hello. And this is actually my second attempt at uh, starting to record this part. I ran into some technical issues, uh, yeah, technical issues while uh, trying to start that all stemmed from trying to get the gamepad to work. It just, it wasn't working. And I decided gyro is not really super important for this game. At least not enough to be worth the headache that the um that the setup was causing me. So I'm just going without that. <laughs> uh, I've everything else though, I, I think I've got things pretty good. Um I was having some issues last time I recorded with the audio. Uh, I think I've got that fixed now. I've got better uh, mic placement, so I'm hoping that uh, there won't be any issues on that end with my microphone. I've been trying to play with the noise gate and like the noise reduction to to really kind of get it like less of a headache because I've noticed sometimes it cuts my voice out too so uh, I'm trying to between mic placement and the noise gate I'm trying to find like the best setup to really minimize if not just completely get rid of that problem. But other than that, everything's been great with this game so far. Um, I've actually noticed uh, one of the problems that I had and why I was kind of confused is I'm so used to the Switch Pro controller that I forgot the Wii U Pro controller doesn't have gyro so if I want gyro I have to use the gamepad and like I said using the gamepad was not worth the trouble um it is like a little faster I suppose to use the inventory but I'm so used to playing this game on GameCube that I actually kind of prefer this like pause screen inventory like Honest to God, uh, that's not just coat. Like to me, trying to use the second screen is just—it's too much. It, it uh, it's unnecessary, and I think even Nintendo agrees because uh, they don't have that in. Uh, Breath of the Wild. I don't know if Twilight Princess HD has it. I forgot. Do I just... Okay, yeah. It was the simplest answer. So yeah, I, uh... I recorded... a bunch. And I mean like a bunch of uh, SMT5 stuff the other day, which, like most stuff that I I mention, it'll be out by the time that I, I have this up. And, uh, that was kind of a nightmare. Uh, the last zone uh, in SMT5 has kind of been like a low point in the game for me. I don't know what you're saying. But uh I don't I'm I'm letting him talk like <laughs> but yeah, like I think you know, I'm like I'm 50 uh I'm like 50 hours in the game at this point. I've been playing it 
quite a bit while I'm not recording because of where I am at this point where I need to level up. So I'm getting to the point where that game is, uh, it's past the honeymoon phase. So I'm starting to be able to think more critically about it and what I like and don't like about it. And right now, because I've been so happy with it, and now that, you know, I am starting to think critically of it, the flaws in the game are much more apparent. And I don't want to say I don't like it, but I think right now my perception of it is kind of skewed to more negative than it will be in the future when I have more time to really process how the game is. Uh, so it's not to say that I don't like the game. I think it's still probably one of... It's one of the better games. It's one of the better games that I've played in the past few years. So uh, I'm still having a lot of fun with it for the most part. I think, or at least so far, up until this point, I've had a lot of fun with it. And I think this part that I'm up to is uh it's just like a low point of the game and it sucks that the low is like right near the end because that doesn't uh that's not gonna leave like a good lasting impression but uh who knows who knows how it'll go maybe the final stretch will really blow me away so I'm holding out for it. I, I think one of my main gripes with SMT5 right now is I think it kind of lacks its own identity. You know, it's a good like middle ground between SMT3 uh, and 4, gameplay-wise, and I guess tonally, uh, except it doesn't really have, like, its own, uh, its own identity. Uh... It seems like there's a lot of callbacks to Nocturne, which is fine if I felt like it wasn't trying to prop itself up on that game because it lacks substance. Uh, I feel like they're trying to like use reasons and alignments at the same time, and the alignments seem kind of weak, they seem a little whack. I know people like to complain that the games are often chaos sided and I know like a big problem people had with 4 was just how uh, how much better neutral was than Law and Chaos. And in this game it's just, well not this, this game, I, I'm playing Wind Waker, in SMT5 uh, it just seems so out of whack. Like, it seems like Chaos is arguably the best ending so far. I mean, I don't know. Maybe things will happen later that I haven't gotten to yet. Uh, but, like, neutral doesn't even make sense. Like, neutral seems like that's the genocide route. Which is usually, that's Law and Chaos. So, who knows what's gonna happen. And I have a problem with, like, they gave so much screen time to Ichiro and, like, gave him, like, character development to have him, like, kind of be like, yeah, you know, he goes towards law. Like, it makes sense. And then, like, we don't see much of Yuzuru. So, we don't really know. All we know is that, you know, like, he kind of becomes the chaos rep because we need one. And he's the only other person who's been established as, like, a demon summoner. And we know that he... 
uh, he's loyal to uh, the former, you know, he's loyal more to Japan than to Bethel, so he has to, uh, he has to go chaos. Did I? I'm, I'm, I'm dumb, right? I, I don't, okay, I don't have the leave. I have to get it, right? Like... <laughs> okay. I'm s I'm sorry. I'm I'm very. I have to do this. I thought I needed the leaf to do this for some reason. So. Don't mind me. I I was so focused on. Uh, talking about. Something else that. I kind of forgot what I was doing with this game. And that's all on me. Uh, bu -bu. Mm, I, I gotta I gotta use the hook. Wow, I just realized you don't have to hold the button down and use that. <laughs> wow. I'm mistaken and don't know how time works. I think this is going to be the last uh, video I put out for uh, like Christmas Eve. So, uh, uh, right, I'm trying to think. I think I still haven't put part two up yet as of now. So, if if I'm if I'm not mistaken, then this will be out on the twenty third, and there probably won't be anything until. Uh, I want to say the twenty seventh or the twenty eighth. Very bad with uh, with with time, so uh, I I could be mistaken in what day is what. So, but yeah, I'm gonna I'm just not gonna like put anything out like around like Christmas time and like stuff like that. Uh, people should be doing better things, and so will I. Uh, not that I don't enjoy, you know, I think this is fun, but, uh, there's better things to do, uh, for all of us. You know, I'll be able to play some games and just sit down and play them. Uh, yeah, I'll probably end up, like, recording some stuff. Uh, probably more of this, because I'm really enjoying it. But I just won't put it out. I'll I'll kind of stockpile it. I don't know if the GameCube version was like this, but I feel like it's very strange how you can't just point the stick in the direction you want to like point the wind like you have to like push the joystick to the side 
and it'll like move clockwise or counterclockwise, which I don't like. Flash your magic now. So now, I don't want to do that. Uh, it's weird. The Wind Waker is always on the D-pad, which is good, except, uh, maybe it should go northeast, or northwest. Yeah. But I still want to, like, press one of the face buttons instead, so now I gotta wait for this updraft. Link's face has so much detail in HD. Whoa. Whoa! Well, I actually zoomed out pretty far. Alright. I think I've timed this correctly. No? Could have sworn I had that timed correctly. Now I gotta wait it it goes slow as molasses. Okay, yeah, yeah, the wind's perfect. So a couple actually I don't think it's a couple days ago. Very, very recently. I'll leave it at that. Very recently. Uh, oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. I pressed the wrong button. God damn it. <laughs> How do I use a controller? Uh, so very, very recently. I'll leave it at that. Uh, Jontron put out a new video about... What the hell is his name? I can't remember his name now. But he's the director of The Exorcist. And uh, it was his uh, documentary on a real-life exorcism that was about as convincing as uh, the action, you know, the movie. So that was a very funny video. Uh, and I never, I didn't know about the uh, wait, what do you call it? Uh, the one headline where he. He mentioned that if he wasn't a filmmaker, that he'd be a serial killer. Uh, that's something else. He said, like, all great artists have violent tendencies or something. Like, that dude's off his rocker. But, yeah, so that kind of sent me on, like, a JonTron binge. And uh, I've been, like, rewatching some of the older stuff. And some of the ones that I never watched, because, you know, he... His videos are kind of few and far between, which I don't mind because he makes very quality videos when they do come out. But, uh, I did notice that, um, a lot of them I don't even remember coming out. I think I just missed them in my, like, subscription feed. So, like, uh, the juicier one I watched, again, I don't... I don't remember ever seeing that. I rewatched the Kid Nation stuff. I remember that came out, and I think a couple friends of mine and I got on like Discord and like we watched some of it because I think someone uploaded episodes of it to YouTube. So uh, we watched at least one episode, like in full. And yeah, that show's like nuts. Like, that that happens. It's just... They had them, like, compete in these, like, really, like, weird challenges. Like, honestly, like, if you've seen the JonTron videos on that show, try to track down, like, the actual full episodes and, like, watch them. Because 
he only like scratches the surface of how like batshit insane the whole premise is. Like it's the, the showrunners were absolute idiots. I don't know. I don't know what inspired that choice. I think it was a very unique circumstance in like post 9/11 America that allowed that show to exist. I, I don't think it could be done uh, again. At least not for a very long time. I don't think I'm. Uh, actually, I was gonna say I don't think in my lifetime, but that might be a little extreme. I don't think anything like it could be tried again and maybe like within this decade, you know, maybe give it like another like like 20 years and maybe someone will try it again. Maybe the Zoomers will think it's a good idea when they're adults because whatever generation that comes after them is going to be like so uh so shit at like anything like related to the outdoors that even the zoomers are going to be like all right listen let's make a show where we put them in the wilderness by themselves without like cell phones and see what happens <laughs> like maybe that's what's going to happen can i can i get this with a bomb maybe if i just Uh, it got me thinking, actually, uh, I was remembering the Red Letter Media video. They did a review on the Blair Witch Project, and uh, Mike said something about, like, he wonders if that movie could, like, if that premise could be successful again. Like, can I, can I maybe... That re okay, I can't reach if I go to that one. He said something, yeah, where he was wondering if the the premise of Blair Witch Pro uh, Project, I almost said progress, uh, could work again today because, you know, uh, like teenagers nowadays, like, they're all on their cell phones and, like, they're used to seeing, like, more candid, like, footage of, like, other people. Like, you know, the idea of, like, young people going out into the woods with a video camera and like filming things uh is was kind of a novel concept when Blair Witch Project came out and the you know presented as the footage of a a documentary crew who went missing uh and even like the viral like lead up to it and the hype with the website and everything it was like a perfect storm and again I think that could that was like a perfect like situation. It was like a circumstance where that premise could only work in like post 9/11 America, like like that early like uh, like 2000s sort of. What was that even post 9/11? I don't remember. I was, I was barely conscious like when that movie came out. So you know. Take that for what it, for what you will. You know, I make fun of the Zoomers, but I'm not much older than them. Uh, but anyway, like that that concept like was was super novel at the time, and like it kind of kickstarted the whole like found footage thing, uh, as I think we all know already. I think they made that jump. But I think, uh, I don't think that premise could work nowadays, at least not in theaters. Uh, I don't think anyone, like kids today, you know, kids nowadays, fuck movies, 
Um, but I, I don't think they would go to like see that in the theaters. Oh my god. And <laughs> I don't remember this being so difficult. I just I need I need you to to go. What the fuck? No. Okay. Let's try this again. Okay. So I need to go this way. Oh. It's like Changing directions. Which one do I gotta hit? No! Okay. But I think what a lot of people maybe ignore or don't think of. Uh, when they think of things like, what the fuck? I like how Blair Witch couldn't uh, be done t uh, today. And something that I didn't think about until just now. Because I've, I've talked about this before with like people I know. Uh, where I think things like ARGs and unfiction sort of... Uh, sort of replace found footage okay so if I just throw this it would break so maybe that's that so yeah maybe we couldn't have Blair Witch nowadays but we do have stuff like I'm trying to think of like a new like a, a fairly new like sort of ARG or uh, unfiction project. Um, and all I can think of is like analog horror. Like that's the big thing right now. Is is analog horror. The the, the, the poop fart chronicles or whatever they want to call it. Uh, why was that so much easier this time? The only thing I can think of right now, and it's not even that new, you know, stuff like, uh, like Marble Hornets, which again, that's, that's not new at all. Or, uh, I was going to say the Walton Files, but that's also like an analog horror. Like Local 58's analog horror, like, I don't know. What is a, what's a new, or like a popular ARG that like, but you know, those kind of things have kind of replaced, um, found footage, which is good because I think found footage was getting really old and tired and generally like formulaic, un un uninteresting. Did I say uninspired already? Because it's uninspired. Uh, s snooze fest. Uh, Grave Encounters is like, I think the best example of like how bad it gets when it comes to like found footage, because nothing happens. Uh, it's like the whole mo actually, no, I take it back. Grave Encounters, or Grave Encounters, is bad, but it's not the worst because the worst is Paranormal Activity. But anyway. My complaints with Grave Encounters, I just fucked that up, is that, like, nothing happens for, like, pretty much the whole movie. Uh, and the big lead-up is, like, stretchy CGI spooky ghost face. And it's really lame. But Paranormal Activity is even worse. Because the whole fucking movie is... Like, literally nothing. <laughs> like, nothing happens. And 
it fast forwards. Like, <laughs> this is what kills me about these movies. I don't know how they made so many of them, how they got popular. Because uh, I, I think maybe it exists just so people on their phones like have something kind of like moderately like spooky to put on like during Halloween time while they do something else because like the whole movie is like nothing happening and it's like fast forwarded footage and then it slows down right before something spooky happens so you can see it happen at normal speed so it's like every time you see the footage go back to normal speed you're like oh I gotta pay attention because the scary thing's gonna happen but then that that destroys all tension like how do you make something scary if you know you're supposed to be scared you just go ah and like it's like a, a cheap thrill and it's shit and uh, this is why I have better taste in movies than everyone. <laughs> oh boy, I got the compress. Oh yeah. Uh, in short, uh, fuck movies. Oh, I did break that. Cool. Getting Getting flashbacks of Macabre fucking appearing before me while I'm trying to get places. Oh, can I get those? I can't. You know, RJ, I really just think that maybe found footage movies are, are shitty. I mean, actually, when you really think about it, right? Blair Witch, like, is that even any good? You know, I, I say it could only happen, you know, when it was made. And I think that's partly because people, uh, you know... And I'm not saying, like, oh, you know, people back then were pussies, right? But, you know, uh, people back then had different sensibilities. Uh, the technology was new, and I think that kind of thing uh, scared them more than it would anyone today. Uh, you know, we've been so inundated with stuff like it, and I think our, our concept of what's scary has, has changed. Actually, I think... Maybe... Because I remember before I said that Blair Witch was post 9-11, but maybe it was like a little bit before. If, if you know, uh, or you know, care to comment, uh, you can correct me on that. Uh, I'm probably wrong. I, I'm trying to remember when it came out, because I was very young when it came out. And I barely knew what the internet was. Uh, so, maybe it, it was, it was definitely like early 2000s, so I don't know if it was like just before 9-11 or like after, but. Yeah, the the mindset oh fuck <laughs> uh, was very different back then, and what scared us was very different too. Because uh, I know a lot of like the post 9/11 horror um, got into like kind of the gore porn like genre, like Saw and. Uh, was a hostile or it was just like just trash like honestly uh listen, if you like those movies i mean i guess sure like have your fun but i think 
I think they're trash. Like, they're just, like... They're just made to be, like, be overly violent and shocking. And, like, I'm not, like... Not, like... Like a Puritan where I'm like, oh, you know, violence is bad. You can't have violence in a movie. You know, you can't have gore in a in a horror movie. But, like... There's no substance to it. Like, there's... I, like, you're there for the gore, and the story is just there to, like, loosely justify why it happens. So, to me, like... To me, it's not, not really worth it. You know, if I want to... If I want to see Saw, I'll just go to, like, the local Taco Bell bathroom. <laughs> It's a moth. Top 10 moth uh, bosses. Actually. <laughs> Top 10 moth boss fights in video games. Number 10. Whatever this is. Zelda the Wind Waker. Number 9. Giant moth in Silent Hill. Those are actually the, uh, the only two moth boss fights I can think of, um, in a video game. And this is, like, barely a moth. I like those fluffy moths that you see. Uh, there's pictures of them. I can't remember what they're called. Uh, but they're, like, super fluffy... And like, like, really cute looking. Oh, oh my god, I don't know why this just popped in my head. It was actually something I, I wanted to open. Uh, <laughs> I wanted to open the video, just mentioning it with no context. Uh, but I completely forgot. So, I have to ask you, dear viewer, if I can, if I can get this set up. I have to download the image, and it's a GIF -if because of Twitter. So, that is a... Uh, you're in for a real treat here. <laughs> Dear viewer, whoever you may be, could I interest you in a beast chussy? <laughs> I saw this yesterday. Without any real context. And I want I wanna know. Actually, can I transform this? I want There we go. I want I wanna I wanna have a link. Link Link has the beast chussy. <laughs> oh man. Anyway. That's what I want to ask you. Uh, would you... Would you eat a beast chussy? Uh, please contact me at the web zone down below. Your thoughts on, uh, on, on that. Oh yeah, I gotta do the thing with the boomerang. Okay, yeah, this... I don't, I don't have to hold the button. Which makes it a lot easier to deal with. I was wondering, I was like, how did I do this on GameCube? 
That like sucked even harder. It, I, I think I mentioned this in one of the other Wind Waker videos, but my hot take is uh, I've never liked the GameCube controller. Uh, I will be what I mock um, in, in the hardcore gamers is that uh, the GameCube controller it's just it's just a bit too babby it's a it's a babby controller you know it's it looks like Fisher Price I think the layout was made by somebody who doesn't know what a video game is <laughs> Which is ironic because it's it's Nintendo, but like I mean Xbox did so much. Okay, well Xbox did better once they uh, w once they ditched the Duke. Uh, I'll I'll say that much. But um, like we had we had PlayStation, right? There was. There was already PlayStation, and that layout was great. Nintendo had this, like the Super Nintendo controller, like the the four button like kind of layout that we have now, like already existed. So it's not like good controllers were. Like a foreign concept that we didn't come up with yet because sony and nintendo themselves did it in the past uh and microsoft was able to figure it out and you know and nintendo nintendo ditch the design to make the pro controllers so i think uh i think i'm sorry GameCube controller fans, but I think what's really going on when people say that it's the best controller ever is a lot of coping and sneeding. Uh, and I'm gonna say that the number one uh, demographic that copes and sneeds about how great the uh, GameCube controller is is Smash fans. They need my GameCube controller uh, because they cannot get over Melee. They cannot leave Melee in the past. And that is, that is a fact. I understand that it's one of like the few OEM like wired controllers like Nintendo like makes but listen I like I like having the pro controller when I play Smash Bros I use a pro controller and that's that's just a fact it, it's just it's more comfortable to me and I'm not sorry Remember, my opinion is 100% factual, and it is the best opinion. So if you if you disagree with me, then not only are you wrong, but you don't even have the best opinion. So why would anyone like want to take that position? Like, That's just how it is, you know. If if you like GameCube controller, you you're you're coping, you're sneeding, you're you're factually wrong. Um, you have a a terrible opinion, uh, and uh, you're babby. I, I, I think I've I think I've covered all the bases. Um, that's my closing argument. And remember that Wind Waker is bad because it's Babby game.
And it, everything bad to you is bad. Uh, Mario is Babby. Uh, Crash Bandicoot. Not Babby. Spyro Babby, though. Sp Spyro is very Babby. I don't know why our good lord Sony, our saviors, uh, let such a, a creation onto their, their mature cinematic movie platform you know the 90s were a different time and i'm so glad that sony snoy uh grew up and let us have the amazing cinematic masterpiece that is god of war uh truly truly well done listen might seem like I'm taking a lot of different sides right now. And that's because I am. Because... And... It is my, is my nature... That to not... Not take a side. I must sow chaos. And misrepresent not only myself, but everyone else. <laughs> Truly, uh, truly the only winning move is to just make everyone mad. All right, you have to have your sword out. Use the shield like this. I kind of wish this game had a mini-map. Seems like an odd choice. And not? Unless I just never picked up the map? That could also be what's going on. Because I could have sworn it did have a mini-map. What the fuck? Link. What are you doing? Look at his face! Oh man. <coughs> so, some at Christmas earlier about how I wouldn't put out any videos around Christmas time, which is true. I will not. But I, uh, I did my 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 Christmas wrapping earlier today and is it supposed to like get easier like it's like something like I'm oh my god it's something I've like never been good at and I think maybe I get like incrementally better like every year but I don't have a lot of like practice like and you know so when you mail like gifts you're thinking like, like, oh, like thank God, like I can just like order it online and like have it shipped to like whoever, like I need to mail this to. Uh, it just to me, I always feel a little guilty because like, you know, if I'm if I'm mailing a gift, chances are, like I'm buying it from Amazon, and. I don't think Jeff Bezos needs any more money, and I feel kind of bad giving him my, my money. <laughs> uh, and then giving him extra so that they can gift wrap it in their little gift bags so that I still kind of feel like they're unwrapping a present song. But it does make things easier that I can do that. But the people that I can give in person. You know, there's, I think there's something, something to be said about when you wrap something yourself, even if you do a bad job, just like, 
you know, it's like, the, you know, like gifts in, in general. You know, it's the thought, I think, that counts the most. That you would take your time to try to do a good job. Anyone who would begrudge someone who is maybe not good at rapping, like doing the rapping themselves and, you know, trying their best. It's kind of a dick. <laughs> this is... This was made by a dick, too. Like, And this needs to really sod off. How do I? Come on. It, it's not moving at all. Which direction do you spin? Holy crap. No! Why? I don't understand you. How does that fucking work? Okay. Drive me nuts. Did I get it? I did it. But I still... Oh, I don't need to... I still get B and A mixed up because I'm like constantly switching between like Xbox and Nintendo controllers and the different layouts are like giving me like Ajita like real bad. It's like I just I need to stick with one. I don't know which one I like more. Hey, I don't need to go up here. Why am I even doing that? Oh, Link, what are you doing? Um, and reset. I'm so used to playing like <laughs> Breath of the Wild or like Genshin. That, like, I instinctively, like, when I climb a ladder, I want to, like, press A and jump up it to go faster. Oh, I gotta do this again? I can't remember if I ever mentioned it, but, like, a few weeks ago, I got the... Zelda Game and & Watch. And I remember the Mario one coming out like a while ago. And I heard like it was kind of it was kind of poopy, like a little stinky because it it only had like Mario Brothers on it. So I was like I was a little iffy when I first saw the like they announced like the Zelda one. And I was like, uh eh, like I don't know like I don't know if this is like worth the money, because I think it was like forty bucks. I'm like, uh eh. you know. Well, a little on the fence here. Uh and then I saw that it had Zelda one and two, which are, are both games that I, I very much enjoy. And also Link's Awakening. And I was like, well, like, damn. Those are some great games. Uh, I would have been happy with just the two NES games. Like, Link's Awakening getting thrown in there? Uh, pretty good. And, you know, it's a cool little clock. I got a stand for it on Etsy. Because Nintendo wants you to make a stand, like, out of the box. Like, this wimpy cardboard one. And, you know, you plug it in, and it, like, functions as, like, a clock. Which is pretty cool. 
My only complaint... I press X to attack, because that's what new games do. But, uh... Not, yeah, I, my only complaint is that, uh... Link's Awakening is the original, like, monochrome version. It's not the DX version, with, like, full color. So that's a little lame. But I'm... I'm wondering if that was, like, a conscious... Conscious... Conscious choice on Nintendo's part. So that everything, like, would be green. Because it has that green and gold aesthetics. So, like, oh, let's put the regular Game Boy version on, so, like, that'll be green. Uh... But it seems kind of pointless when they have two NES games that aren't entirely green already. I know I need to get there. But I'd be lying if I said I knew how. My brain is not working right now. Ah, yeah. yeah. oh, there's a grapple hook. Okay. That makes sense. Look at that. You can just use your noggin, and, you know, even if it doesn't always work so good, you know, get your places. So we got the big key now, right? Like, that's pretty dope. Okay. Alright, so I guess you have to do this. So where was the boss room again? Oh, okay, it's just this way. Cool. We're gonna go fight the boss. I love Link's run cycle in this game. I just noticed this arm clips through a shield. Alright, it's ruined. Terrible. Terrible animation. Nintendo's hack frauds! Yeah, Link can spin. And that's pretty cool. Oh, that's not what I... Probably get the bottle ready. Let's see. Buto. Oh, that's gonna be the only fairy. Yep. Alright, well, I guess the only option is to not suck. I think these are very short dungeons in the beginning. There he is! Makar! Little buddy! Yeah, he got eated, eated whole. Wom wom wom. 
I think this game had some pretty creative bosses. I just completely whiffed, like, most of those. Uh-oh. Doing the bombs. I mean, I could definitely see this being, like, a little bit easier with Gyro. trying to avoid that. I think my problem is uh, when you go to use the boomerang it defaults instead to like where Link is looking instead of where the camera is looking and I think that's what causes me problems. fuck up at all. <laughs> it proceeds to immediately fuck up. <laughs> Oh my god, we won. That was a clutch victory. Weesh! That was like a sheesh and a wheel and a something else mixed together. I really can't describe what that what that was, but it was a, a nice a nice feeling of victory. And we saved Makar. Our homie. Oops. I always felt kind of bad. For like Makar and um, Medley. Because like. Like they're the sages. So I feel like. I feel like when you like go through like the temples with them, like I don't know. When I was like a kid, it always felt like a little like tragic. I'll probably be able to like better explain it like once like we actually get to those dungeons as to like why that feeling like exists, but. I've always, I think Makar I've always like felt bad because he's always been kind of like a... I, I, I don't know what, what word I, I want to uh, use. Because probably wants to say pathetic, but he's not really pathetic. He's just like... I guess he's so childish. And like, he has scenes like this where like he's just like... He's just a really cute character. And he's just this little like, tree creature, and, like... I really like the Koroks. <laughs> I think they're great. 
And I'm, I was... Of all the things that, like, they kind of brought back in Breath of the Wild, like, I was so happy to see the Koroks again. Got the cello. I mean, I love this game's music. Like, how do you not love Koroks seeing this? I love this game. <laughs> I really do. I just play music. It's such a nice song, too. I've always liked this area. And I've always liked the Koroks and the, I don't know, it's just... It's all wonderful. Truly when video games gave... Like a... A whimsical and... And... Sounds so cheesy and sentimental when I say, you know, games were magical back then. But, like, I don't know, they really were. Oh, I have mail! Mail time! A letter. We just got a letter. We just got a letter. We just got a letter. I wonder who it's from. Ba 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 ba! Oh, nice piece of heart. Let's get the remaining pearl. Oh! I like how the game is so nice as to tell you which direction you need to go. Is that the direction the wind's pointing? But yeah, let me check the map. Maybe it's just kind of a coincidence. Okay, so I can head I can head northeast for a little bit. Let me put my bait. Actually, do I have this trident? I'm, I, I'm losing my mind here. Nah, okay. Well, I, I don't. I am losing my mind. But I do not have this trident. If, if we see the fish, let's throw the bait out for him. I don't know how much. Like, I'm going to do all the side content. This, is, this game has so much of it. But, uh, you know, I'll try to have, like, 
as natural of a playthrough as I can have. I won't try to like force myself to do everything. Because there's so much in this game. I don't really want to spend too long on it, but... You know, just enough to have like a good revisiting. Where is the fish? Yeah, that's like the villa you can buy, right? I don't remember how you get that. I know it's like a whole drawn out quest. The poor fish. A salmon. Is that a salmon? I don't know what, what kind of fish. I guess it's not really like a real fish, so. We have to head due west soon. Good. One of the better quality of life features this game has is, well, you know, this version of the game is how you don't have to like wait for the whole song to play. I think it's what every every first time you like play the song, like per session, you have to watch it. But, like, that's not too bad. That's probably about as much as I'd want to see it. Truth be told. Never annoyed that I have the bait now, but I haven't seen the fish. But I'm not going to go, like, looking for them until, like, later, I think. Until I like, really need, like, everything mapped out and charted. Right now, everything is uncharted from Sony PlayStation, the truest cinematic third-person shooter. There's so many cutscenes, it'll blow your balls off. And if the game doesn't, you will, because you'll be so fucking bored watching cutscenes. That you're going to need some kind of stimulation. I actually like Uncharted too, but... I've never played 4, but I didn't really care for 3, and I, I think 1 was pretty shit. I only played 1 because I liked 2. <laughs> so... I forget how you get the third pearl in this game. Alright, we have... We have... The fire. And the grass. So what's the other one? That, like, water or ice or something? So... Was that a dungeon? I, I honestly, I cannot remember it. I know the middle of this game is kind of fumbles a little bit. Uh, but. You know. That's okay. Once you have to get all the Triforce shit, it, it gets to be a little bit of a pain. Hey! Oh, yeah, 
Great Fish Isles. A great water spirit named Jabun once lived here, but no sign of him remains. Who just called me a hoe? the mailman yes I am looking for Jaboon I'm sorry to report to you that Jaboon can no longer be found here just look at how this place has been torn to pieces I suppose this too is the work of the shadow in the forsaken fortress but fear not Jaboon was able to flee this island before it was attacked he is in a safer abode now would you like to guess where that abode may be on the island where you were born, on Outset. Yet, even if you were to go to Outset now, you would not be able to see Jaboon. The cave where he hides is sealed with a mighty stone slab that repels all who try to pass it. Why, not even the pirates with their mighty ship could get in. You must apologize. Thought if anyone would know of your, thought if anyone would know of your whereabouts, it would be the pirates. I told them this tale without so much as a thought of for the consequences. I don't know what they hoped to get, but they immediately set sail for Outset Island and tried to break into the cave. It is lucky that they could not gain entrance. I have heard that they were last spot on Windfall Island, but doing what I... But doing what, I do not know. If you wish to seek Jaboon, I think you'd better search for the pirates on Windfall Island. What an eerie isle this is. Everywhere else, those clear skies and calm seas. But this place suffers under dark clouds and rain. Baloo must have been right when he asked me to bring word of Jaboon to you. He called this island cursed. I would counsel against staying here longer than you have to. That is your decision. I have told you of Jaboon, so my task is complete. Flap, 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 flap. Yeah, this game does have a little bit of a problem where it kind of sends you, like, all over the place. Just to kind of pad things out. It is a genuine criticism. Uh, this version kind of makes that a bit better with the fast sail. So, Jaboon has survived. Hey! The sea spirit has lived through the trials of many long years. He must have caught wind of Ganon's attack beforehand. We're able to believe the words of the Rito postman. And the pirates know something about the cave where Jaboon hides. Why don't we first go to Windfall and search for them there? Hey! Right. Windfall, that's... Oh, that's outside. Okay, I was, I was just... Look at the, the UI, I'm like, where... Alright, so I need to go... Northeast? Oh god. Yeah, like, I really just want to be able to, like, point it where I want to go, but, like... I feel like you kind of can, but you kind of can't. I don't know. It's very strange. It sounds ominous. So let's head over to Windfall Island. Did it always have the ominous lightning music? Ah, oh, oh, fish. I like the, the music that rips off Jaws. Hey, bud. Eat the food. Hey! 
Hey, Smile Fire. Yeah, yeah, I've heard. I take you want chart and information about this island? Then start by opening up your sea chart. What? What? Tingle Island. Somehow fitting for this ominous music. Let me tell you about this island over here, Small Fry. The guy who lives here named is Tingle. But he won't grow up and act his age. He still dresses like a little kid. That is not normal. Still, from what I hear, he can decipher maps like nobody's business. Just goes to show that you can't judge a person on appearance alone, Fry. Of course, the thing about this Tingle guy is that when it comes to time to pay his deciphering fee, you'd better be ready to fork over some serious dough. Anyone who doesn't have a deep wallet won't be reading any maps, that's for sure. And that's all the info I've got to offer. If you want to hear it again, you'll have to throw some more bait on the water for me. Sorry, but that's my policy, Fry. I can't go fighting evil on an empty stomach, you know. And with that, I'm off. Alright, I guess we, we could stop by and say, say hello to the tingly one. Good evening. One letter. You wish to be a true swordsman. Find some knight's crest and return to me. Orca. Red root. Do I got any of them knight's crest? Got one. Oh, you can just press L to switch. Not R. It's kind of frustrating. Eve. Ho! Oh, this is heavy. That's just between you and me. This guy has another brother. That guy could just come and spin this thing instead of me. Eve! Oh! Um, you have a Tingle bottle, do you not? Uh, no, if you're not really a fan of it, don't worry about such things. The Tingle bottle is sort of complicated, I suppose. No, 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 don't get out of your way. No, really. I mean, it is quite amusing, the Tingle bottle, I mean, but... No, I, I would not expect you to. Keep ho! I don't. Even, I can't even do the tingle voice. I'm not even gonna try. You want to? But you're not here to play. No, I'm here. To chart. Wait, do I not? Oh, I guess I don't. I don't have a chart. I thought I had a chart. Or there's specific tingle charts. I don't remember. I thought I need him to decipher the treasure charts. Yeah. Tingle's got a choo-choo jelly problem. Almost at windfall. But ominous and dark and scary. The great C theme, but in G minor. <laughs> and I have no idea what key this is in. I'm no musician. I couldn't even tell you what the uh, what the key of the original is. Listen, I, I just like listening to music. I, I don't know anything about making music or 
deciphering music. That's something you can do. Do, do you decipher music? I play video game. Okay. There it is. There's Windfall Island. It was a dark and stormy night. The pirates were up to no good. Just as the postman told us, the pirate ship has stopped here to avoid drawing the attention of the townsfolk. I know not what they are researching, but if they are hoping to get their hands on Jaboon's sacred gem, I doubt they would tell you anything directly if you were to ask them. I think you should try to find out what the pirates are up to without them finding out about you. So the first thing I will do is board their ship, of course. Who cleans pirates' ears? Dog. Uh. Jesus. <laughs> you can tell. to find their password. Yep. So where would I hire a pirate? Where would I Openly talk about the password. Hello? Why, young sir! I say you seem to be in possession of a very fine picto box there. Are you a lover of pictographs as well? There can be no villains amongst the ranks of picto box lovers. Take your time, look around, I implore you! And while you're here, please do visit my upstairs pictograph gallery. You're bound to find it quite exciting, young sir. I guarantee it. Stop. Scoop by. Pictographs. <laughs> oh, ho, 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 ho. aren't these some finely snapped pictographs? You must admit it. But come now, you need to be so surprised, my young sir. It's a hobby of mine to sneak up behind people when they least expect it. It's quite an amusing diversion, think nothing of it. By the way, the pictographs you see decorating these fine walls all have been taken by none other than myself. They're my pride and joy. You see, in my younger days, I was tireless. Sailing far and wide across the great sea, snapping pictographs. Whatever I want. Have a look at them, young sir. I keep changing the way I pronounce pictograph. It's another hobby of mine. What's the secret to snapping a fine pictograph, you ask? Why, just stand back at a slight distance and capture your subject frame just in the right manner. If the picto box is too zoomed in, you cannot discern what the subject is, correct? This is why such pictographs are high are rarely considered to be fine snapshots. Pictograph! I'm a pictograph maniac! 
Picto, Picto, Pico de Gallo. What would she oh, I should be? Oh, what terrible weather we have today! Actually, you know, uh, I'd be. A, oh, what terrible weather we have today! Little boys shouldn't be out wandering around at this time. My no. I think she likes joy pendants. I don't get stuck out there. You're gonna get more sugar now. I think I think that's I think that's the kind of voice. I, I guess I can't I can't do that yet. I don't want no stinking joy pendant. I don't. It's kind of turned into like kind of turned into to like Mario like Saturday morning Mario just you know like Luigi. I don't want that stinking joy pendant. It's no good. I don't like it. Get out of here. It smells like dead monster. We don't even have monsters like that in the Mushroom Kingdom. We have Goombas. It smells like... Like, what the fuck is a Moblin? Luigi. He come to me... On the day... Of my Toad's wedding. And you're gonna talk to me about... Moblins? What is that? Yo, what's up, man? I just broke into your house. It would seem that there won't be an auction this evening, wouldn't you say? Not in a storm like this, there won't. Yeah, I mean, that's a fair assessment. Can I, can I jump? Yo, what's up, man? Dear me, there's... How do I... But there's a terrible storm raging this evening. The night seems very unsettled somehow. I kind of... Kind of close, right? I don't, I don't remember. I can only do so many voices before they all start to fucking blend together. I don't even, I don't even have my own voice anymore. I'm just trying to figure out what these pirates are up to. We're closed today, so scram! Now! Scram like a bunch of rats! What is back? Can I climb those? That. Uh, no! What the hell? <gasps> the Emperor's back. What the? That face Link is making is the face James Rolfe makes in every new fucking nerd episode. Is it me? What? Okay, hold on. Control. Actually, I think Link. I think Link's expression is better. Huh. Is this? I wonder if this is actually I'm supposed to be. It is. I can tell because there's pirate music. For a second, I thought the game crashed. I was worried. Look, oh, hold on, man. Oh, it's my best Poindexter voice. Actually, uh, look, don't be mad at us. It's not our fault that we absolutely gotta have bombs to get the treasure we're after. How about you just think of it as payback for the nasty little monopoly you've been running here, yeah? 
I don't know which one is talking. I'm gonna assume it's the glasses. So I bet you're thinking it would foolhardy to ask pirates to pay such an outrageous price, huh? Yep, I bet you are. You know, Gonzo, I still can't get over that bit of fast talking you pulled to get that information out of the postman. Oh? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. That was smooth. Smooth like brain. I tell you, the minute I set my eyes on that kid, I just knew he was hiding something back at the outset, yeah? So, when I saw the postman, I just pretended... Oh, wait, it's the same. Oh. So, when I saw that postman, I just pretended like I was all worried about the kid and stuff. And presto, he spills the beans. Good work, Gonzo. Really, really, really just top-notch. It's funny, I, though I was thinking this might be the first time you've shown such wit, such cunning. You know, with your cunning and Miss Tetris smarts, if you two got married and had a kid... That could be the greatest pirate to ever sail the seas. Yep, that's going right in my erotic fan fiction. But that's my book. Oh, you, you idiot. You keep your mouth shut. Yeah, don't be stupid. Miss Tetra, are you listening to this nitwit? Can't you dock him some pay or something? Quit goofing off, both of you. Keep your childish jokes to yourselves and get your bombs back to the ship. The second you're done loading them up, we're saying sail for Outside Island. What? Miss, we have to leave immediately? But it's been so long since we were on shore. We need to fill our bellies with some good eating, yeah? How about we get some grub tonight and shove off tomorrow morning instead? I mean, uh, I'm fine either way, of course. Whatever you're saying is fine, Miss. I, it's just, I mean to say. It's just that, you know, the boys were so excited to come to town, yeah? And I can't help but think that it'd be awful hard on them to just leave so soon without a proper layover. Well, what do you say we set sail tomorrow? Yeah, what do you say, miss? Uh, the treasure's not going anywhere. You and me, right, boys? Who's for a night? Who's up for a night of fun? Gee, you're all fools. Do you know that? You saw that demolished island. You saw the senseless destruction. You have to hurry on to outset, or the same thing can happen there. Oh. Not to be disrespectful, but by the sound of things, you're more worried more about that island than the treasure, miss. Don't be ridiculous. I, I know... I want... You know... The treasure. Alright, fine. Have it your way. We can leave the town tomorrow, you big babies. We're setting sail at first light, so don't be sleeping in. Understood? Aye, aye. Say, dear brother, what was today's password again? Mako, are you serious? You forgot the password. You're so useless. Today's password is Swabies, yeah? Remember. You know that Nico won't let you in if you don't say it exactly right, and he's real picky about it, so I'll say it once more. Today's password is Swabbies. Yeah. Swabbies, eh? I was gonna stop now, but I know for a fact that I'll forget the password if I don't if I don't do it now. Oh, well, sorry, bud. I can't help you. You know, I have this sword here. Probably be really great at cutting rope. But, you know. Eh, I can't do it. All he needs in there is lamp oil and... Like... He's got a full more shoe, you know? Rope. Bombs. Lamp oil. It's yours, my friend. As long as you have enough rubies. Swabies. I'm a real pirate now. Oh boy, I've always wanted to be a pirate. Ba -ba. Uh...
Yo, Nico, what's up? You wanna go bowling? I old swabby! So, you're alive. All the other pirates said you got done in by that bird monster in the Forsaken Fortress, so I thought... Never mind what I thought, you're alive! Oh, I get it now. You came back because you missed me so much. I had no idea you wanted to be my swabby so badly. I see, I see. Well, after you left, I went back to being the bottom rung the ladder, which is why I'm stuck here while everyone else is in the town having fun and eating and stuff. But I guess being so worshipped by my swabby ought to cheer me up. Alright, why don't we set you to your next test, huh? This one's harder than the last. Good luck, you'll need it, swabby. See, there are lanterns hanging throughout the room, right? Well, last time when you pressed the switch, platforms rose up for you to jump on. Yeah, well this time there aren't any. Which means you have to jump from one rope to the next rope. Pretty tough. And that's not all. This time, I put a gate on the door, too. The switch opens the gate, but it'll close if you don't get out. If you don't get here before time runs out. Run out of time, and you'll have to try it again, little swabby. I love this music. The switch that opens the gate is in the same place as before, so just go step on it. If you get all the way to this side before time runs out, I'll give you the bombs we got in town. Yeah, you heard me. His voice disintegrated. He's normal. Give it your best shot, Swabby. He needs to sound like a rat. You know, he's the rat. He's the guy who extra extract camps you. How do I? How do I go down? Uh, don't want to run out of time. Huh. What? You, you gotta be. You did it already? You're, you're, you're incredible. This isn't good. I've never passed this test. How could you have done it so quickly and make it look so easy? If I give this to him, everyone will know for sure. Oh, I'll be so busted. Uh, okay. You're the best swabby of all time, so. I guess I'll give you the bombs. Go on, take them. Just don't tell anyone, okay? I'm, I'm serious. Really serious, okay? Okay. Bombs? Rope? Lamp oil? That's mighty courageous of you, trying to steal treasure from pirates. I suppose I should be shocked, but I'm more amazed that you managed to survive after being tossed out of that tower. The look on your face. I have to guess you haven't saved your sister yet, huh? You don't give things much thought, do you? You just rush in, never thinking how badly things could go for you. Like just now, the only reason you got what you did was because we left a simple-minded little rat like Nico behind to look at things. No one else would have parted with our treasure so easily, I assure you. And just how do you intend to use those bombs anyway? Don't tell me you're just going after Jaboon's treasure, too. Right now, Jaboon is hiding in a cave at the back of the island you were born on. The entrance is blocked by a giant stone doorway. You can't get in without breaking down the door. We're going to relax in town and eat our fill of whatever this town has to offer, but we'll be leaving for outset first thing in the morning. If you manage to find Jaboon tonight, then I guess you win. If you take too long, we'll come sailing right by you tomorrow morning, and believe me, you don't get... You didn't get all of our bombs. Better be quick, kid. Wow, awesome. You have a stone just like the one Miss Tetra has. Hey, how do you use that thing? Can you talk to Miss Tetra through that? Man, you're so lucky. Alright, so... We got the bombs. I'm to leave the pirate ship and go talk to the king. Boy. Oh, it's a boy or is it? Is it? 
I actually don't think he says anything. It's just it sure is boring around here. I wonder what Ganon's up to. My boy, this piece is what all true heroes strive for. Let's talk to the king. Well done. Our preparations are complete. What the girl says is true. The pirates won't be leaving until morning. We must meet with the Jaboon and get the pearl from him before they arrive. Let's delay no longer. Out set island. Oh, wait. What am I? I want to go southwest and then south. I'm starting to get like the hang of that. I shouldn't have to. I should just, just be able to point it in the direction you want to go, but I'll stop bitching about it. I've infiltrated the pirate ship and made it out with bombs. Snake. You need to use the bombs to destroy the stone door on Jaboon's lair. Alright. I've gotta use the bombs to destroy the stone door on Jaboon's lair. Got it. How do I do that? Snake, while you're on the boat, Press left on the directional pad to use the bombs. You can then aim with the analog stick to fire the bombs. Alright, so I just press left on the directional pad. Then I can aim where I want to shoot the bombs with the analog stick. Thanks, Colonel. But, do I use the circle button? I really want to use the circle button. I guess I could shoot at the shark. You know, just blow it up. But, yeah, that's like senselessly violent. Like... You know, do we really need to, like, be teaching kids that, like, they have a problem with marine life? That they should just blow it up? Like, really? Is is that is that the kind of society that, that we want to foster? It's messed up, man. Think about it. Think about it. You know, we live... We have to live in a society. Just ain't right. It'd be so much easier if I had the bow. Yeah, okay, yeah. That's that that's not happening. Oh, okay. I could use the boomerang. That's much better. I wonder if anyone was yelling about the, the boomerang. Alright, let's, let's just change direction to south now. this treasure. Let's see what we get. Is it possible to get the Triforce before like 
that quest. It'd be really funny to just like randomly like stumble upon a piece of the Triforce before you get to that point in the game. It's like, oh, I wonder what this is. It's like a shiny like rock or something. I guess I'll use this as my rock or something to uh, heat up my MRE with. So we're just going to head south until we see Outset Island, I guess. Yeah, the fast sail really makes this kind of thing easier. And that's a really good quality of life feature, because I don't even think you need to use the... Uh, the Wind Waker to change the direction of the wind. I don't think you get that until much later. I forgot that you didn't even get the third pearl from, like, a dungeon. Like, you just kind of get it. I can only assume that, like... You know, making a game for the new hardware and stuff. They probably had to cut corners in some places and... Had the game out other ways by... Doing things like the whole Triforce thing, and getting all the charts, and... Real pain in the butt, really. Oh, where'd he go? That's right, he's spreading my boomerang. Is that how Aussies deal with sharks? They just throw boomerangs? Almost there. That's it in the distance. We just gotta get to the back side. I can't wait to bomb some stone slabs. Oh, okay. Morning has not broken since we arrived at Great Fish Isle. The land was so ravaged by monsters, it's as if time itself is frozen. Perhaps this is the curse that Valu spoke of. Whatever the reason, this night does not end, and we do not need to worry about the pirates overtaking us. In fact, it might not be a bad idea for you to visit your hometown and family again after such a long time away. We can speak with Jaboon after you do. Alright, well, I was going to take care of Jaboon first, but since we've been given such a nice stopping off point, that's what I'm going to do now. So save and thank you so much for watching it'll be a while before i put anything out again but see you then and take care